What's going on Facebook? So jumping on to kick off 2019 with the first live of the year. Whoops, as I just about knock everything over here. Uh, hopefully everybody in the Southern Hemisphere that's already 1st of January has had a fantastic night, but at the same time, those who are about to celebrate or out celebrating it at the moment uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, I hope you guys are having a fantastic night. Stay safe and uh, hopefully the hangover is not too bad tomorrow. So I just wanted to jump on uh, this month of January. I'm intending to, I will be jumping on doing a Facebook Live per day, giving some content, giving some value, and just spreading the message to really kick off 2019 and my goals, dreams, desires, direction, all of that sort of thing. Uh, really wanting to ramp up this message around women's relationship coaching and uh, impacting the, the emotional abuse or just abuse in general. Um, the abusive relationships. Now, I, I know I haven't actually explained a little bit around why I'm an emotion, uh, re woman's relationship coach, but look, that's another video. Um, follow me on Instagram at I am Brett Williams. You'll go and be able to find some of my details around there. But that's not the point of today's video. Today's video, I want to jump on and have a chat around. Uh, you know what? I might even just share it over to the, the old personal page. See how that one goes as well. Um, also, let me know if you're jumping on and watching the replay as well. Uh, keen to hear, keen to check out. Uh, whereabouts are you tuning in from? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, so, today's particular one. Now, when it comes to abuse, uh, abuse comes in, in multiple different ways, whether it's physical, sexual, emotional, and a number of other ways as well. But they're the three that I want to focus on in the conversation that we're having right now. And I want to say why emotional abuse is the worst kind. Now, a number of the clients that I've spoken to have been through abusive relationships, majority of which are emotionally abusive, but at the same time, there's obviously aspects in there that can be physical or sexual as well. So why am I saying that emotional abuse is the worst kind of abuse in the whole process? It's because physical and sexual abuse, it is a very evident point in time as to when it actually took place which allows the person to be able to disassociate from that particular event. Now, I'm not saying that's a healthy thing. I'm not saying that it's a, a viable process. I'm not saying that um, you know it's the best way to deal with it, but at the same time, it is a default process that us as humans uh, implement so that we can actually deal, can actually move forward in that side. But when it comes to emotional abuse, emotional abuse is like the, uh, what did I use as the example before? It's like the weeds growing in the garden. You know, you don't know they're there until it's too late, until everything is like, all the weeds are just so high and they're just very much in your face. When, I, I suppose I should take one step back and talk about, well, how am I determining and how am I specifying emotional abuse? Well, the way that I'm looking at it, it's a case of, it's those backhanded comments, it's those those negative put downs, it's the, um, the just those comments that will chip away at your self-belief, be it, and I'm not talking about, oh, you're fat and that. Look, maybe it could be that sort of comment, but more a case of like, you could never ever do anything right. And it leaves, leaves the person who's on the receiving end of it feeling as though, you know, starting to question their own value, wondering whether they're broken, starting to believe some of these, in, these stories and embedments that are being uh, implied to them. So emotional abuse is something that happens over a long period of time or a period of time. And it's something that is like little bits that chip away that eventually start to add up and start to compound as a impact. And the effects of emotional abuse in a relationship, whether it's an intimate relationship or whether it's a, um, you know, just personal friendship relationships or what have you, will show up at some period of time, but they're not going to show up in the moment because in the moment, it is <clears throat> very easy to disassociate from what it is that they're that comment that's being made and being said. So emotional abuse, as I said, is probably one of the, the main conversations that I have with my clients. Uh, most of the women that I do support and work with have been through some form of emotional abuse. And, sorry. And, um, <laughs> so have been through some form of an emotional abuse. Some have been through other abuse as well, but the emotional abuse is the one that is very conniving. It's not easy to pinpoint. It's a um, it's a walk through 
the vines to be able to find where it actually took place and being able to uncover what it was that actually um, went on for the individual on the receiving end. Because as I said before, when that comment is made, be it a negative put down or whatever it might be, in that moment, it's very easy, easy to isolate that particular comment and pretend like it meant nothing. But then if you took a, a higher level back and looked over everything, you could start to see all of the negative, emotional, abusive comments and how they're compiling together. And hey, Brony, hey, Debs, um, and how it's all compiling together and how it's having an impact on self-belief, self-love, self-acceptance, self-worth, um, just the, the, yeah, that self-belief around I'm broken is probably one of the biggest things that the women that I work with um, ah, sorry, it's different sort of messages came up as, as Debs just responded to Bronnie. Um, so that's probably one of the major focuses of a lot of my work, uh, when I'm working with clients. Now, if you are somebody who is going through an abusive relationship, now I'm, I don't tell my clients to, to walk away from them or anything like that, but it's a case of really just getting to know for yourself what is going on for yourself in that moment. Because one of the biggest traps when it comes to an emotionally abusive relationship is that, and I put this on my Instagram today, and there's, there'll be a, uh, an image post somewhere on my feed as well that's just talking about breaking the cycle of uh, abusive relationships in 2019. And in the actual text of that particular image, it talks about how abusive relationships are, most women that, have, that are in them or have been in them, they feel as though they're being pulled and pushed from different directions. You know, in the moment of the actual abuse, and this can be a very generic sense from a, a physical abuse and emotional abuse as well, so not just the emotional abuse, but nonetheless, in the abuse in that moment, they can feel as though, all right, that's it, I'm done, I'm out. But then at the same time, in moments later, they're starting to be pulled back into the relationship through false promises and false beliefs, but at the same time, their underlying desire to help. That is probably one of the most detrimental things that I've seen for women. And it just comes back to a self-awareness of being aware when you're operating from that space of, of wanting to help and fix. Because too many women stay with men who are abusive to them that are, okay, I get it. You can see his good sides. You can see his potential. You can see that it's not really him. But yet at the same time, you've got to also acknowledge and admit to yourself that all of the times that it's taken place, you know, there is an aspect of it that is him, at least in this moment. Not saying that people can't change, but in this moment, that's part of who he is. So really getting to the point where you, you connect with yourself and connect with your own value and be able to move through it and actually walk away from it. <clears throat> now, at the same time, many of the clients that I work with, as I said, who have been through a number of these abu abusive relationships, some find themselves in three, four, five, six, eight, nine different relationships that all have that same sort of feeling and sense that uh, end up being abusive in one way or another. It's a case of also when you do walk away from that relationship, you've got to spend some time with yourself. For many, it's so easy just to be able to, just to walk back into the next relationship because there is a, um, I don't know, just read what Debbie just said here. Oops, all right, I can't see all of it. Um, to walk into the next relationship because the internal conversation that's going on is so loud and is just so um, confronting for many women that I speak to, that they don't want to be on their, be by their self and actually confront the thoughts and the conversation that's going on with internals. But unfortunately, there's an aspect of it that you've got to actually do that. I know it doesn't sound fun, it doesn't sound exciting, but in doing so, it allows you to get to know who you are, to get to know the differentiation between the conversation that's being embedded and in like enforced onto you and all of the beliefs that he had been forcing onto you and the actual beliefs of yourself. You really get to know who you are as an individual. So a lot of the work that I do with my clients, it's a case of starting to really put them in the spotlight. You know, for many, many women in that situation, I'll ask them a question and they'll deflect to all of be to respond in, in relation to everybody else. 
and I can see how it's such a an unconscious reaction in so many ways that doesn't allow them to actually uh, to step into the the center stage for themselves because they've been too busy focusing on everybody else but in that time when you walk away from that abusive relationship you know there's no there's no rule of thumb of a time frame you know if you've been in a relationship for three years it's you know it's going to be two years that you're by yourself or a year and a half there's no rule of thumb when it comes to these things everybody moves through it in a different way in a different pace but obviously if you're working through it by yourself it's going to take longer if you're walking through it with a coach it's going to be a lot more smoother because especially if it's somebody who's been through it and supported others through it as well and in that in that instance as a shameless plug there's a clarity call link in the description below so if you are somebody who's ready to actually start to take ownership of your own space and start to work through a lot of that emotional abuse uh, baggage that you've been through then go and schedule a, a clarity call let's jump on a free call and let's have a, an exploration conversation to understand what's going on for yourself uh, and then let's start to pave a way moving forward and uh, see if we're a fit from a client coach perspective and um, so when it comes time to actually be in your own space don't also deflect deflecting thoughts feelings and emotions that come up is not going to be a sustainable solution it's around actually walking through that and again I was having this conversation with with a client yesterday on a clarity call and I was just talking about how for for most people they're really keen and excited to actually make that change make that shift but then when it comes to the idea of walking through it now one of the things I pride myself on when it comes to the way I work with my clients is I create a safe space for them to be able to show up. I create a safe space for, that is judgment free that allows them to express whatever there is for them to say in that moment. And this makes it a lot easier for the women to be able to show up and express a whole array of different things that allows them to, uh, to be heard, to be seen, to be themselves. And to be able to express a lot of the things that is going on so that they can start to become free and disassociate from it. Because when we actually start talking about this stuff, it no longer has a hold on us. It's when we feel embarrassed from the relationships that we've been in. Maybe it is a case of uh, being through an abusive relationship and just believing that you're less of a woman because you were in that relationship because you never ever thought it would be you whatever it might be but when you start to be able to vocalize a lot of the things that you've been through all of a sudden this story that's running your life no longer has the same sort of hold on you because you are able to just to acknowledge it you know acknowledging it can be a massive massive thing and it can be one thing that really does transform everything in that moment for you because maybe you haven't had that safe space to be able to express what's going on now, if I was to, no, let me take one step back and just sit with that topic for a moment. It's something that has shown up in so many occasions in the conversations that I have had, be it the clarity call, be it the, the actual coaching sessions, is that a lot of women have expressed to me that they've never ever, never ever told specific things to people around them because of fear of judgment, fear of belief of what they will think of who they are or you know their own internal images or anything like that that's showing up but yet the ability to be able to express something to somebody who has that that capacity to hold space for somebody who is going through something is a massive massive thing now I just want to convey a little bit around my own personal journey as to why that is possible and why I am able to be able to do that I've said it in in many other situations before but I'll say it again I'm able to walk others through their darkness because I have walked through my own. Now, that's not to say that I've got more darkness to walk through in the journey of life, but the thing is I've created a healthy relationship with it. And I've created a relationship where anything that shows up, I'm eager and keen to walk through it. So it allows me to get out of the way from my own stuff and be there for my clients to be able to show up for them and support them through their journey. So that said, as 
you know, I mentioned before, there's a, a link in the, the description, wherever it is, above or below in this particular, the video, the live here. And it is talking about, or it's the link towards booking a, sh or scheduling a clarity call with myself. So it's a free clarity call, which is a case of going through just a number of things that's going on for yourself. Let's have a look and see if, if we're a fit from a coach client perspective moving forward. Because I know for many who have gone through emotional abuse or are currently in abusive relationships, they can st sometimes struggle to have the external support because of that fear of judgment from their friends around them. So if you are ready, if you are keen to really kick off 2019 and have a, an absolute shift in the direction that your life is currently going, then women, I invite you to go and schedule that clarity call in. Now, at the same time, I'm also mindful that, you know, it goes both ways. And men, if there's anybody who does resonate, even though, yes, okay, my focus may be purely with women, but if there are any men who resonate with my message, by all means, guys, I invite you to also book into a schedule, a, a clarity call, and we can have a conversation about how that may look. So I've seen a number of comments and things coming up from Bronnie and, and Debs. Unfortunately, because they're so long, I can't see all of them. Um, but let's, you know what, I've got it on my computer here. Let me go to the session over here and let me see if I can actually read them and respond to them. Um, where are we? So, just let it load. Okay. Um, okay, so Deb's saying, exactly, Brett, I used to hide all of the abuse inside. I would make excuses for his behavior and feel bad not telling the truth to anyone. And it's such a common, it is such a common um, situation and process for so many women who are going through emotional abuse. There is that perception that, uh, and it's going back on a number of the conversations that I've had, and this is what I'm basing my, my references from. There is that perception of I'm less of a woman if I'm in this position. But at the same time, how many other women are also staying quiet whilst they too are going through the exact same thing? So it's a really interesting thing. And that's one of the things that fuels me to start to create more awareness around this and create another platform that allows women to be able to show up and actually be heard and be able to walk through it. And I think that's one of the things somebody was asking me the other day. Obviously, I'm a guy and I'm a woman, woman's relationship coach. Now the first relationship that we, need, that we work with is a relationship with self. And one of the things that um, I guess plays into my favor in some regards is the fact that I am a guy. You know, for, for I've had a bit of a mixed uh, questioning as to like, oh, you know, why do women come to you? You're a guy, you know, what do you know type thing? Well, I know a lot more than what, what many probably realize, but at the same time, it is because I'm a guy that so many women do come to me. It's because I can create that safe space and I'm a grounded male who is able to hold that space and be able to support and give some assistance throughout it from a coach's perspective as well. So, you know, that's definitely one of the things that, uh, that I pride myself on and I don't know a lot of my clients do as well. So um, even Bronnie's saying, I used to smile and pretend everything was okay. You know, so many women are in that same sort of boat and it's, it's just not, the way to be living life it's um you know it's it crushes me what else we got here Bronnie saying i had put up with abuse for many years from different partners not anymore i have been on my own now for four years i have really worked hard on me and i'm in a much better place Bronnie, it's so amazing because you know it does take strength to actually step back and be in your own space and that's one of the things that i always encourage women and Look, even in my own personal journey, I went through an emotionally abusive relationship about five years ago, and, and I too have, uh, you know, a lot of the things that I coach from and a lot of the spaces that I actually talk from are also from my own personal journey as well. So it's not just theory and it's just not focusing on clients, but um, definitely the idea of spending that time by yourself, whether it's four years or whether it turns into be 10 years, you know, it doesn't doesn't matter, but it's, uh, it's all about just connecting and learning to love yourself more and... Um, and eventually the my belief is that the right person will be able to show up and if you do the work on yourself this is something else I'm getting off on a bit of tangents on this particular life but you know let's go for it um, we will only ever attract in 
the equivalent to who we have grown to become. And over those couple of years, Bronnie, I'm sure you can probably agree, like you've grown as an individual, you've grown stronger in who you are as a woman. And that is only going to strengthen the relationship when somebody shows up because you're, you're going to start to attract in a different type of male and, or a different type of partner. Um, and that's one of the things that I always encourage a lot of the women that I'm working with is to really connect in and just spend the time on themselves because too many do get caught up in, I must be in a relationship or I must be with somebody because if I'm not, who am I? And, you know, starting to break that connection, breaking that belief is, is one of the, I guess, the first things to be able to then just have the focus onto themselves. Uh, because for many women, they feel like that is such a, a selfish thing to do. But it comes back to the, the saying that they tell you on the airline when you get on and just before you take off. If the off oxygen masks fall from the roof, put yours on first before you help others. You know, we can't help others if we don't help ourselves first. You know, yes, okay, we can help others, but we, we're, we're giving from an empty tank. You cannot really help others. Like, it's only when your tank is full that you can truly help others. So the, the link in the description above or below this particular live video, not to show where it is actually sitting, the, the Clarity Call link. If you're a woman who is struggling with a number of these things and you're ready to kick off 2008, sorry, 2019 um, with um, really transforming the story that has been running your life and the, the conversation that's been going on underneath it all and in, in cl behind closed doors, you know, the one that is, oh, I can't express myself or I can't tell my friends or because of what's really going on for the fear of judgment or anything like that, then I invite you. I invite you right now to go and click on that Clarity Call link and actually schedule in a free Clarity Call. Let's have that conversation. Let's start to see where things are and what's, what's moving forward and what's in the way. Let's see if we're a fit from a coach client perspective. You know, if we're a fit and I feel like I can support you, then by all means, I'll let you know the next steps. But at the same time, you know, if I don't feel like I'm the right coach for you, I'm not going to try and tell you that I am. So I invite you right now. I've got 10 spots open for this uh, January period. And you know what? Let's make this a big year. Let's make this a fantastic year. So what's Deb said here? Yes, exactly. We'll be able to vibrate at a higher level and attract higher. Yeah, absolutely. By doing that work on yourself and being understanding who you are as a woman, you'll be able to definitely uh, attract in a higher vibrational match. So, um, you know, it's so, so true. And at the same time, for the women out there that start to question that there's no men out there that are at that higher vibrational level, look, I'm doing my best to... Uh, to stand strong in my own space. Why not? I'm not doing my best. I am standing my strong in my own space and hoping that that might rub off onto a couple of guys as well. So, uh, but at the same time, my buddy is a, uh, a men's coach, so he's helping the men out in some of those areas. Uh, so women, there are men out there. So just, you know, stay true and stay strong. Um, happy New Year, Jay. Appreciate it. So... All right, I am going to jump off. Um, wishing you all a, I was going to say Merry Christmas, but Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, and I'll see you maybe a little bit later today, possibly not, but if not, definitely I will be on live again tomorrow. So, all right, speak to you all then. See ya.